Let's begin with the clinical vignette. A 35-year-old male, John, comes for doctor visit due to multiple respiratory complaints, shortness of breath, chest pain, and cough. Chest examination revealed decreased breath sound, dull on percussion, and decreased tactile primitus. X-ray of this man given below. What is most likely diagnosis of this patient? So the X-ray of this patient shows this following things. The options are a pulmonary edema, pneumothorax, tension pneumothorax, tuberculosis, and pleural effusion. So the pleural effusion is a basically the accumulation of the fluid inside the pleural space, that is space outside the lung. So the pleural effusion divided into the two types, exudate and transudate. So in case of the exudate pleural effusion, the main culprit is a vascular permeability. Normally what happens, the oncotic pressure is a basically the pressure that is due to the protein mainly the albumin, it hold the hold of the fluid inside the vessel, inside the vessel. While the hydrostatic pressure normally, it cause outward movement of the fluid. So, in exudate, there is increased vascular permeability and it will lead to the increased leakage of the fluid and the protein into the outside space. And what happened in the transudative pleural effusion? So in case of there is an increased hydrostatic pressure, so increased movement of the fluid outside. Another condition, there is a decrease on cortic pressure. That is the pressure determined by the mainly the proteins and mainly the albumin. So what happened? The fluid move outside due to the decrease on cortic pressure. So exudative causes of the pleural effusion are the malignancy malignancy and inflammation. So inflammatory causes are rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, and the pancreatitis. So in, infection of the infective causes of the pleural effusion are pneumonia, and TB. So that now I'm going to discuss about the causes of the transudate pleural effusion. The first is a heart failure. So heart failure lead to the increased hydrostatic pressure. And next is the cirrhosis and nephrotic syndrome. Cirrhosis leads to the decreased synthesis of the albumin protein and it will lead to decrease on cortic pressure. Nephrotic syndrome lead to the increased loss of albumin. So it will also lead to decrease on cortic pressure. So this table shows there's some high yield findings related to the respiratory pathologies. So, so first is a pleural effusion. So what happened? The pleural effusion Everything goes down, breath sound decrease, vocal primitives decrease, and percussion is dull on chest examination. In atelectasis, same findings that were found in the pleural effusion. So next is the pneumothorax and the tension pneumothorax. In the tension pneumothorax, breath sounds and the primitives is decreased, and on percussion, the hyperresonant on percussion. So the most important finding about a tension pneumothorax, it's away from the side of the lesion. It moved the mediastinum trachea heart towards the opposite side. 
in case of the consolidation, the percussion is a dull, while the vocal fremitus is increased. And on breath sound is a bronchial breath sound, late inspiratory crackles. So the light criteria is used to differentiate between exudate and transudated cause of the pleural effusion. So this table shows the light criteria. So if any of these criteria is meet, so we can label this pleural effusion is exudative cause. For example, if the pleural protein and serum protein ratio is more than 4.5, the cause of the pleural effusion is exudate. And if the pleural LDH and serum LDH ratio is more than 0 0.6, again the cause is exudate. Exudate pleural effusion. So the right option of this clinical unit is the pleural effusion.